Hi everyone, welcome back to another video on Obsidian. In this video, we are going to learn how you can create a home base setup that looks like this. This is a home base setup that I have created in order to get a quick overview of all the important files and the ability to quickly navigate between these files. Here I am sharing everything I have done to create this home page setup. If you want more advanced type of setup, then I have also created another video called as Obsidian Dashboard Setup. Plan and track your life in 2024 with Obsidian. It is a more advanced setup with features such as goal setting, progress tracking, habit tracking, etc. As you can see over here, now we have goals, habits, and this heat map view and many other features. You can check out this video if you want more advanced options. I will also put this link in the description so that you can directly check out the video from there. Let me go through everything that I have done. First here is the banner. Then all of these are created using multi-column layout. And these are data view queries. These are notes added directly in a list format. Data view query. These are also notes added directly. And these are data view queries in order to list the recent files and recently modified files and recently created files and finally we have the obsidian stats view which is created using data view js i'll close this one and create a new note let's write it home page setup 2 okay so first we'll be using banners in order to create that beautiful gradient look for using banner you will need to install the banner community plugin if you have installed you can go to options and you can enable the gradient banner style which looks better than the solid option. Then there are also other options that you might want to check out. Now you can go to command palette and source for banners. And you can see here there are different options for banner. You can add or change emoji icon. You can paste banner from the clipboard, lock or unlock banner position, add or change banner with local image. So I just I use the paste banner from clipboard feature. So I'll just go to browser and source for 4k wallpaper sunset or something like that you can choose a wallpaper uh, or choose an image that reflects what you want to see over there i'll just choose this one and i'll copy the image address go back to obsidian and use the banner paste from clipboard command value and you can see here we have pasted a banner and the banner is not visible when you are in editing mode. If you go to preview mode, you can see here the banner is being loaded. Perfect. We have the banner over here. Now you might be wondering what is this? Okay. This is a node toolbar which is created with the help of node toolbar plugin and it gives you an easy access to navigate to different nodes. You can also add different commands over here. So it is very helpful for that and especially in your mobile phone because of the smaller spacing on the mobile it is very useful so this plugin really comes in handy if you want to disable this view you can just go to the property and write no toolbar and choose none option now it will hide from here you can see and if you want to watch the video on no toolbar i'll provide that link in the description as well so that you can check it out from there I really suggest you using node toolbar plugin because it makes it more easy to use obsidian with the node toolbar. So we have a banner over here. You can drag the image in order to make it look better. Now we'll be using multi-column CSS. For that you will need to go to Google and search for modular CSS layout or obsidian modular CSS layout. Okay. Here you have the GitHub option. Uh, you'll need to go to this obsidian modular css layout by fmk and from here you will need to download this mcl multi-column css you can download this file or you can also copy the css from here and create a new css file in your snippets world so i'll just uh, download this and show you the example now we have downloaded the mcl multi-column css to go to the CSS snippets folder, you can directly go from Obsidian or from your file manager as well. I'll go to Obsidian settings, go to appearance and over here, you can see here there is the option of CSS snippet and here is the folder icon. Go to that folder icon and here you will have all the CSS snippets. Now you'll just need to copy the CSS that you downloaded. 
go back to CSS snippets folder in the dot obsidian folder. I already have it here, but I'll just delete that and paste it again. Now, once you have added the CSS for multicolon layout, you just need to refresh this CSS snippets and it will appear over here. MCL multicolon. Enable it. And once you enable, now you can use the multiple column layout in Obsidian. I have also created a video on multi-column layout. I will also provide the link in the description if you are interested because you need to learn about the syntax of using multiple column by using this CSS. So I'll just create a multi-column callout. If you go to preview mode, nothing will show over here. Now for columns, you will need to do this. Okay, first leave a spacing, then you will need to write that angle bracket again. And anything you write over here will act as a first column. Unless you leave a space and create a new column like this. List 2. Now if you go to preview mode, it will look like this. You can see here. And you can create multiple columns just like this. I leave a space, create two angle brackets and write the content of that column. This is simply how the multiple column layout works. Okay. We'll create a callout inside this multi-column callout. Info and recent books. Here we can directly add the content or we can also use data view query. So to use data view query, we use the three backticks, write data view and from hashtag book. This will list, I just forgot to write list. Data view, list from book. And we'll sort this list by file modification time and limit the number by five, limit five. Now if I go to preview, it shows error because I have a syntax error here. It's not sort by, it's just sort file modification time descending. Now you can see we have a list of five books queried by data view sorted by descending order based on their modification time. And there are only five. Now let's create another column. We'll close this on data view. We'll need to leave a space add another angle bracket and we'll again create another sub callout. Let's write recent projects over here. We'll not use data view here. Let's just list some of the files over here like this. Now, if we want to create another column, we just need to do the same thing. Leave just one angle bracket and create two angle brackets after that, write two angle brackets after that. And let's create another sub callout. Let's create a success callout now. And here we'll write journal entries where we'll be using data view query to list the recent journal entries. So in my case, all of my journal entries are inside this reflect folder and journal folder. So I can just use that as a query list from if you want to specify a folder, then you will need to add the path inside this double quotes. And if you want to specify a tag, you just write that tag. Or I can just use daily, which will list all the notes from daily tag, but it will not list notes from weekly and monthly notes. So I will use the query from folder path. That is 003 reflect journal. Now, if I go to preview, you can see here, we have the list of files from 2022. I'll need to sort these files by file, modification time, descending. Okay, perfect. Now we have these files, September 26. Great. This is the first row of multi-columns that we have created. Similarly, you can create as many columns as you want um, based on what you want. If you want to add more information or more important files over here, then you can definitely do that. I'll show you by adding one more row with two columns uh, for recently updated files and recently modified files. It is simple. The data view query is simple. Let us create a ruler over here and write 
create a multi column multi column now we'll create a to do call out with the title recently updated we'll use data view query from the whole root folder list from the whole world and we will sort them by file dot modification time descending and limit the files file number to five let us see what we get okay now let us create another column for displaying recently created files recently created now we can do the same we can use the same data view query data view list from the whole world and sort by file and here you will need to use the file creation time and descending file dot c type descending limit the number to five so what happens when you do not use this limit feature is that it will display all of the files in your world and this might cause a little lag based on the number of files your world has my world currently has around 2000 nodes and if i do not use this limit function over here then it would just lag the obsidian app in itself because of the query and the large amount of data data we plugin has to process through so i'll just in the data view query so if i go to preview mode now this is what it looks like perfect if you want to add more columns you can do the similar thing you need to first specify multiple columns as call out over here and i'll leave a spacing then you'll need to create a sub call out like thing and add the content over here and the best part is that you can use data view queries as well if you want to add more files or link to more files like the favorite files or recently visited files you can definitely do by adding more columns one last element that i showed you in the beginning for the home page setup was the stats view obsidian stats view and i created this by using cloud ai let me go back to cloud and show you the chats. I saw someone on Discord who had made similar stats view, but there was no code. I have asked him, but with the help of AI, I was able to get this snippet. So I wrote here in Obsidian using data view and data view JS, I want to display information like you have been using Obsidian for X amount of days and X amount of nodes and X amount of tags. And it gave me uh, this JavaScript code we're using data vjs and it worked perfectly on the first try and i just used that code i can see here i will share this home dashboard file along with all the code snippets that i have used in my patreon it will not work as it is but you will need to make some changes uh, it will work for the obsidian stats because it is same but for other things like data view queries where i used queries from a book tag if you don't have a book tag, it will definitely show an error. I have directly written the names of the files. They, these files definitely won't be in your vault, so it will not open. It will show you the option to create a new node. You can create a home dashboard like this either yourself or you can just copy all the elements from the file and make the necessary changes. Like you can change the data view code. You can change the list of the files over here like that. So this is all for this video i hope you found this video useful and this video will help you to create a dashboard view that looks better and that allows you to easily get a quick overview of all the important files in your world and easily navigate to those world one final thing that i forgot to tell you is that you need to install home page plugin in order to make it more effective to use this home dashboard okay uh, so what this home page plugin does is let me go to come to plugin and source for home page it will open a specified note canvas or workspace on startup or you can set it up for quick access later as well if you go to option you have the option to set the file workspace random file graph view or nothing you will need to enable the option to open on startup what this will do is whenever you open your world this file will open first and if you check the option to open on empty when instead of showing the empty tab it will display this note let me show you okay so i'll close this tab command w and 
when I place command W, it will automatically again open this node. This is the beauty of the home page plugin. Let me show you by reloading. Okay, first I'll open the different node. Now I'll reload the vault. And you can see here, whenever you reopen the vault, it will display this home page setup dashboard. So this is all for this video. I hope you enjoyed the video and found it useful and it will inspire you to create your own dashboard or create your own home page setup. Thank you for watching this video. We'll meet in the next video. Have a great time. See you again. Bye.